wonder how many people have sampled music from me. Sampled it out of me. You ever had someone sample and didn't call and didn't follow up or nothing? Yeah, yeah. French Montana. Yeah, that pop that. Shots fired. Oh yeah, yeah, pop daddy. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, hold on. Pop daddy was like, yeah, we want you to come uh, and uh, be in this video. You know, I don't, I ain't on every scene. You feel me? And so they were like, yo, come on by and, and do the video. I'm like, nah, I'm good. You know, now nah, we got Wayne, we got Drake, we got all these people here and everything. And I was like, I don't give a. F-. You know, right. I don't. I'm just, it's just not my vibe. Right. You know, uh, they all cool people. You know, but I don't just move like that because right. somebody is someplace. And uh, we'll send a jet and all that. No, I don't need no jets and all that. Right. Long story short, after the video was shot, shot, then it was all these articles. I guess they had the press set up. Uh, Uncle Luke and French Montana and Drake and Wayne and all them. And then I'm like, I don't know nothing about this song. So people start hitting me. I was like, I don't know what the that is. Right, you know, and that was, you know, then it became a little as if it was a little beef, and I was like, "Yo, bro, I don't have beef with nobody." Did French Montana look out? Like, did they cut you a check? Did Diddy cut you a check? No, I ain't want no check. I ain't want no check. Why not? If it was done the right way, yeah, you we'll negotiate, you know, through people, but I I don't want checks like that. Right. Yeah, I just let people have. All money ain't good money. I was about to say. Did you party with Diddy a lot? Oh, uh, no, not really. I would go to the party and, and leave early. Why wouldn't you stay? Right? <laughs> <All right. laughs> I go to the party and leave early. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know what goes on after part, after hours, but. He wasn't trying to find out. I wasn't trying to find out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know my place. You, you feel, yeah, I know my place. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, what it do? It's your boy, Stunt Lifestyle, and you are watching the Weird Miami <laughs> Podcast. And today, man, we got the legend in the building, man. And I'm excited because we just had our two-year anniversary. So it's only right to have the mayor of Miami, the governor of Florida, the multi-platinum artist, producer, and mogul with the first black-owned independent record label in the country. Please welcome the honorable Uncle Lou. Hey, man. Hey, happy to be here. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. You got the right elements. You got pretty women. You got nice drinks. You got a nice setup. I mean, shit. I appreciate that, man. We yeah. outside. You know, we got some beautiful ladies in the building here, too, for you ladies. Let me hear you say hey. Hey. Ooh, I like that. I like that. But before we get into it, I got to ask y'all, where we at? We in Miami. We in Miami. Now, let's get right into it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's you got the that. new documentary that yep. just came out on Hulu called Freaknik, The Wildest Party Never Told, produced by you, Jermaine Dupree, and 21 Savage. Mm-hmm. That's lit. Can we get a round of applause for that? Congratulations on that, man. That's lit. So what's your inspiration behind the project? Well, the thing is, uh, you know, I was, about a couple of years, I was getting ready to do a movie biopic on myself. Uh, with Lionsgate, and then I decided when I looked at it, and we kept going through different scripts and scripts after scripts. It was like it wasn't telling all my stories, you know. It was just telling, right. you know, it was mostly focusing on one aspect of my life. But then my life is so complex, and so what I did is I kind of told them I didn't want to do that anymore. And so what I went on to do is like break up my whole life into all these different stories. So. You know, a couple of years ago, I did uh, Warriors of Liberty City. That was based on my Optimus program that I started uh, with LeBron James. And then after that, then I COVID hit. So obviously, you know, I sat down, cut a deal with Swirl Films. And so to, to, to actually do all these different projects. And uh, this one here came up, you know, young lady named Nikki Biles and, and Jay, her brother, you know, we all was sitting there brainstorming about what we're going to do next. And they mentioned, hey, what about Freak Nicks? You know, you did mm-hmm. all these crazy parties and all that. And uh, and so that's how the idea came up. You know, after that, you know, we'd start brainstorming more. Wanted to have somebody from Atlanta involved in it. And so we uh, hit up JD to have him be an executive producer. And, and because me and 21 Savage is, is cool like that, I do his his uh, birthday party every year and the theme be, Freak Nick. 
So, uh, you know, I was like, oh, okay, shit, sense oh, to put him in, you know, with the young generation of people now, have him involved because he, he vibe on that. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, we just kept building, got to deal with Hulu, Disney, and uh, there it is. Nice. Hey man, round of applause for that. He got deals with everybody. So wait, so how? What was it like working with LeBron James? Oh, it was, it was. I mean, you know, work with him, his team, Maverick, all them. You know, with that project, we actually got another project that I'm working with them on. Uh, so it's can't really talk too much about it, but uh, we just signed another deal with them. We have another project, Smack Entertainment. That's Strahan and Prime. And Snoop and all them, uh, we had that deal, and then I have uh, another biopic deal with with uh, with Will Packer, and then oh, two wow. two more films I'm I'm doing. Uh, you know, I'm just deep into this film and TV business on the low. That's key. amazing. So you transitioned from music to CEO to now just you getting into these films going crazy. Yeah, because they never told my story. You know, nobody never told my story. I was like right. the Rodney Dangerfield of, of hip hop. So right. you know. I looked at it from the standpoint, okay, if you don't tell my story, that is great. I was mad for a lot of years. I was like, fuck the industry, fuck everybody. Right. You feel me? Because, you know, I started hip hop in the South. Nobody right. wants to give me credit for that. Right. Nah, you know a lot I mean? of people, for y'all, people that don't know your history lesson, Sounds Uncle like Luke is the OG GOAT man. He is responsible for so many careers. He created a whole genre of music. Like, we're going to get into it. Make sure y'all stay tuned because we're going to take y'all back and we're going to teach y'all a lot. But I, I want to know, man, for those that don't know, so for this documentary, Freaknik, for those that don't know what Freaknik is, can you give us a little lesson, Freaknik 101? Well, I mean, you know, when you look at the, the, the documentary, and by the way, we, after uh, yesterday and now today, we're number one on Hulu. Hey, uh, yeah. turn up, man. That's, that's yeah, big. so that, that's a great Congratulations. Day. Appreciate it, appreciate yeah. it. You know, I mean, the, the documentary is about, you know, a party that most people thought I started. You know, and so, you know, again, Little story of mine, you know, basically, I didn't start it. I don't like taking credit for nobody's work, you know. And uh, as you get into the documentary, you'll see that the students that started it, they didn't have any money. You know, they're from the AU uh, Center up there in Atlanta where you got like four colleges connected, more Morehouse, more uh, house, Spelman, Spelman, and uh, uh, all those colleges in there. So they didn't have no money to go to go to Daytona Beach. They didn't have no money to go to uh, Dustin or... or or uh, anywhere else, you know, re regular spring breakers go. So they wanted to live, have a little party, a little picnic, okay. and they started this for other <laughs> for other broke college, uh, college people. Students and they, out, yeah, you yeah. know, they created the party, and so people started coming. And then, you know, I heard about the party, you know, uh, probably a year after. And, then, you know, I heard anything that had freak in it, and I feel like I was supposed to be there. That's, yeah, you, yeah hey. it was like, hey, freak? Oh, shoot, I got to go. But, but <laughs> he I got the know. freak, other freaks, so you know he running the freak shit. He got a couple <laughs> yeah, freak yeah, Definitely on the freak oh, shit. Yeah. So you just came in and joined it, and, like, people thought it, like, you started it. I, yeah, I yeah. thought it was a, a, a freaky party. Right. And it wasn't a freaky party, but we Did you, Do you think you kind of are responsible for turning it in, into a freaky party? Well, I turned it up. <laughs> <laughs> I turned the motherfucker up, ain't no question about that. But uh, but you know we, you know, then was, you shot one of your music videos during Freaky. Yeah, work it out. I, I sh uh, work it out. Then yeah. I, I shot uh, bouncing beat there also. So you know between my high success at the time, once I let everybody know that I was going down there, so people started coming from miles away. And then every year I would shoot a video, and so the video would the picture of what was going on, and then more people started coming in before you know it. It became this wild and crazy party. It was it was organized to a degree. At right. first, we would do concerts in the parks and all that. Then after, do after parties and end up at one twelve. And and uh, back then, they didn't have no Magic City or anything. Yeah, that like was that. before all of that. That was before all that. That's crazy. It's crazy, man. How Atlanta has grown. And so I gotta ask you, what's your craziest freak Nick moment? <laughs> <laughs> My craziest look at her. Like, she looking. Like she looking like what? I'm yeah. excited her to hear the story. Her mama was there. Her mama know about yep, it. Yep, my mom. <laughs> Hold on, how old are you? I'm 28. You 28? Yes. Okay. She looked like a baby. I'm like, I'm about to check her ID in a minute. Should I tell the story yeah, yeah. for mama? Yeah, tell her, tell her the story. What was her mama up to at Freak Meet? Your mama was there. I don't know what she was up to, but I really want to know because she threw the party. <laughs> oh, man. But I, I mean, it's some wild stories, man. I mean, I, I, I guess I would say... Um, doing chase parties you know when it did get bad you know 
we'd have to do these chase parties. You know, similar to if people are familiar with England, you know, when you go to England, you do uh, acid parties. And acid parties, they would get on the phone and, and tell people, you know, where these parties are. And then everybody would go there. Cops mm-hmm. would come in, shut it down. Then you go to another spot, mm-hmm. get another phone call. The party so, never stops. It never stops. So that's what we were doing uh, in Atlanta. You know, we, when the police come, shut us down. Then we go to another mm-hmm. spot. Right. Then go to another spot after they shut that down. But And, you know, I know on the documentary at the end, it kind of showed the decline of Freak Nick. And speaking of, like, the police shutting it down, it kind of reminds me of how, like, in Miami, because, you know, with Atlanta, the city officials wanted to get rid of Freak Nick. I know it was for multiple reasons, mm-hmm. Olympics and all of that. But it kind of reminds me of, it, of Miami right now. How do you feel about spring break in Miami and, you know, the city wanting to cancel it? Yeah, that's, I mean, that was one of the, you know, one of the unique things about this, which, uh, you know, when, when, when I was producing it, you know, it was easy for me to produce, you know, to, to give you, you know, what you see on the actual documentary, because I lived at every year here. Right. You know, I've written columns about Miami Beach and how the government of Miami Beach is so racist against African-American students. What people don't realize is uh, African-American spring break, you know, is one time a year. It's the end of spring break, somewhere around this time, March, and then you have white college spring break early into the spring. So, you know, they know exactly that black college students will be out on spring break and that they're going to come up with all these measures and all this shit about... uh, uh, all these curfews and everything and create a chaotic situation with no programming, you know, and that's what it is. I mean, I don't know of one college student that has the intention to go to a destination on their break, you know, to shoot up someplace, uh, to right. start a fucking riot. You know, no college student thinks like that. You so know, do they, you think the the Miami spring break restrictions are based on race? No question about it. They're racist. They're racist as fuck. You know, uh, they, so they you think they just don't want like black people? They don't to come want black here. people. There. No, <laughs> they don't want. Right. I, I mean, that's just that's a fact. I kind of agree. It's been crazy though, man. Like the the um the prices are going up on parking. Uh, they blocked the all the streets off. The curfew twelve a.m. Yeah, yeah. But Taxes thirty percent. Exactly. I mean, when you when you the real talk when you create it the same way in this documentary that we showed how Atlanta shut it down, they use basically the same playbook. You know, you they'll go and you create any chaotic situation where there's no programming or nothing. There's nowhere to put people. You know, there's no clubs. They are restricting the hotels from their pool area. So you got a bunch of people sitting in the middle of a fucking street like South Beach and like Atlanta, and you create gridlock. Now you're going to have the crazies come in, you know, the, the hood brothers, and they're going to get creative. And before you know it, you're creating a chaotic situation where you then now got to show in the news, oh, these young people are doing all this wild and right, crazy right. shit. Black people are animals and all that. And so now you give the community FBI, support and shutting it down. Right. And that that is what they, they even use that same playbook with gentrification. Mm-hmm. You know, when you look at an area that's been gentrified, it was a crime written area before. Mm-hmm. And then after the crime, then you, your mama, you get the mama house and then you sell the house and be like, I don't want to stay here no more. Some guy knocking on the door, you know, and you leave. And then before you know it, you know, it becomes gentrified. And, oh, it's so nice to live yes, here in Harlem right. and Overtown and all that beautiful shit. So right. they do it. I mean, it's the same game plan. It is. Yeah. Like no, nah, I agree. It is like a game. Now, speaking of the city of Miami, I understand you actually ran for mayor of Miami. Yeah. Actually? Yeah. That's crazy. And he got 30% of the vote. Right. One more time. That's dope. Wow. That's dope. See what yeah. And you also indicated that you might run for Congress. Is that true? Oh, who said that? I saw <laughs> online. They say you might be thinking about running for oh, Congress. Oh, well, I haven't made that decision. Is that too that too much? Going Congress are, our governor or something, uh, something down the line, something. Some? But yeah, I ain't ready to say exactly. I'm still uh, thinking. I'm still thinking about what uh, I'm going to run for. So, but, I, but you know, be uh, you know, it's a lot of moving parts because I got so much shit going on. Right. Uh, every time I'm always thinking about running when I see bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I know I can go help. Right. Because that's what it's really about helping 
the, mm-hmm. the, the voiceless, you know, people right. who don't have a voice. I got a platform and a voice. I'm well aware of the issues, you know, so I get pissed off and I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna run for governor. Fuck it. <laughs> right. I'm gonna run for Congress, you know what I mean? Uh, I love it. Right. And, and so that's why my mind said, so every day, and then the other days, reality hit me like, yo, motherfucker, you got five. TV projects and a movie. You got a lot going you know, on, man. It's like it's, move, it's only twenty four hours in a day, man. I know yeah, it's hard to manage you know, all of but, that. But that's that Jamaican in me. So the people want to know who would Uncle Luke vote for, Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Joe Biden, no question about it. Yeah, no, nah, I can't fuck with Trump. Okay, you, mean, I, you know I know Trump. But, Shots yeah. fired! Shots fired! Because I understand uh, all the political candidates son. come to you for endorsements because of your power and influence in Miami and abroad. And I even saw where Camilla uh, Harris sought out your endorsement when she was running for president. Isn't that right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I went on the road with her, you know, before all the celebrities jumped on her. You know, once they made her vice president, everybody jumped on her. You know, that's how we got mm-hmm. that kind of culture of people. Just, you know, I was there, it was just me and her right. going from city to city, you know, trying to get people to vote for her and, uh, and calling up other entertainers and shit. And they was, eh, I'm doing something. As soon as she became... Vice President, you seen all the old pictures of them coming. I'm like, boy, these some fake ass motherfuckers out here. I swear <laughs> to God, you know, you couldn't get them. But that's just how the world works, you know. Uh, you know, because uh, I know, I, and like you said, you know, Trump. I I remember reading a story that you actually were Donald Trump invited you to his um, West Palm Beach mansion, and uh, you were a guest there. And you, it was you, Mike Tyson, Eddie Murphy, and uh, oh, you said it was like a little wild situation that happened. Oh uh, well, it was it was a party. You never tell about parties. <laughs> like this you party, tell us about I that party. What, nah. what, what went down? <laughs> no, nah, I, I some parties you don't talk about. One thing about me, I don't. I don't you know, look, hey, it'll probably end up in my, one of my movies or some shit like. That. <laughs> uh, but you don't see. But you it. had yeah, a good look time. At, look, at, see, uh, look at look at look at See the girl starts straightening up and shit. Oh shit! Like, oh, what kind of party? But you had like, a good Trump time party? though. Uh, but is it safe to say that like Trump knows how to have a good time? Trump, listen, Trump has a, a lot. Trump got good taste when it comes to women. Right. If you look at, if you really notice him, Trump <laughs> really has to be having a bad, 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 <laughs> bad What type of women, women does he have over there? Really? Right. Trump has some bad bitches. I want to know, though. I always was curious because I heard Trump rumors. Is it true that Trump women. likes black women? Is that true? I don't know about all that. I, I, I never... Uh, I thought I heard he had like dated like Every a mixed woman. white man like black girl. women. Hello. All these white men Hello. up here Hello. like black women. In the back, y'all like black women in the back. We got a couple of Caucasian yeah. brothers in the back. They like, yeah, I like my, like I like my coffee a little dark. Shit. That's one thing. I've never been with a white woman in my life. Really? Never had sex with a white woman. No. Bro. No. Really? Me neither. Me neither. You ain't never like wanted to see what it would be like? Never wanted to see what it be like. Yeah, yeah. Never. Never. All right, so if you were. It's all flavor. I got all flavors. I mean, I got, trust me, I got a couple trying, but I don't know. But if you had to smash one white celebrity, who would she be? Oh, shit. If you had no choice. If you had to Wonder someone. Woman. <laughs> she is we gotta definitely go for high. the super I, hero. I, got, I got a good eye. Huh? Yes, yeah. I got a good eye. Hey, yeah, hey, 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 hey. me and you together. Wonder me and you woman. are smashing together, huh? Oh, wait. <laughs> me, <laughs> no. Damn. We, me and you are smashing together, right? Now hold on. Hey, Speaking hey, of you hey, ladies, <laughs> hold on. Can we can hold we on. can we do an outfit check? We got some beautiful ladies in here. Yeah. Can y'all stand up, show us a fit, give them some music. Girl. Show Uncle Luke the outfits. Give us some music. Nah, give me my sexy music. Where's my sexy music at? (laughs) There we go. Stand up. Let's see up here. Stand up. Uncle Luke in the building. This is like burlesque music. (laughs) This that ranch. What's that ranch in Las Vegas? That sound like that kind of music. Now, um, speaking of um, ladies, I heard you got a new record with Young Miami coming out. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh shit. Yeah. Hey, round of applause to that. That's going to be lit. Yeah. Can you tell us about that? Is that dropping in time soon? Or what we got? Yeah, I mean, that, it, that is a hot fucking song. I mean, you know, only certain people can get me in the studio. A lot of people try. 
You know, I tell them, man, just go sample me. And so that's mm-hmm. why I'm on so many samples of so many records. I wonder how many people have sampled music from me. They sample the shit out of me. They, mm-hmm. My voice is on everybody record. I go right. in the club and hear my voice on the record. Shit, damn near. At least once a month. Do people call you first or do they just sample it? Sometimes they'll call and sometimes they'll sample it. Then I, then after they do it, then they'll call. Like, Yo, I just want to. Show you some mad respect and uh, yada, yada, yada. But, you ever uh, had someone sample and didn't call and didn't follow up or nothing? And you had to hit them up like, yo, bro, you got my name on there. Give me a check. Yeah, yeah. French Montana. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, that popped that. Shots fired. Like, Shots fired. Fire. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pop that. Yeah, they, I'm like, hold on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was a little, it was a little trick story with that. They were like, yo, we want you to come. It was uh, Puff Daddy was like, yeah, we want you to come uh, and uh, be in this video. You know, I don't, I don't, I ain't, I ain't on every scene. You feel me? Right. I, I, I just vibe with, with my my folks. So when they people call up all the time, like, yo, come be in a video and all that, I don't just be. You don't be pulling up unless you like want. That. Yeah. Nah, did it, you? It do you? But right did you party shit. with Diddy a lot? Oh uh, no, not really. I would go to the party and and leave early. Why wouldn't you stay? <laughs> <right>? <laughs> <laughs> I go to the party and leave early. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I wasn't invited to too many of those parties. Why didn't I mean, you? I to, why didn't you stay late? Like after hours, with it? did it get know. crazy <laughs> after that or what? I, I don't know what goes on after part after hours, but he wasn't trying to find out. I wasn't trying to find out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know my place. You, you feel? I know my place. Yeah. You know, so I, I went to a couple. Um, uh, what it is? Uh, uh, New Year's Eve parties. Right. I mean, I know I know Puff before Puff became super big like that. You know, he a cool dude. I mean, all the shit going on with him. You know, I feel sorry for him and his family, more right. so his kids. His kids, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got right. People got kids involved in this mm-hmm. shit. And, you know, and social media is dangerous. Mm-hmm. You don't know. no. It's always two, two, three sides of a story. Right. It's yeah. two sides of every story, man. Yeah. Like you, and, and that's true. He made a major point. And you can't always believe everything you hear. There are two sides to every story. Yeah. So all right. So back to the French Montana situation. So so what happened? So they 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 got the sample, and then yes. what? They hit you with like, "Yo, pull up," or what happened? Yeah. So uh, uh, Puff hit me up and said, "Hey man, we're doing a video." Blah blah blah. And then it was you know I was out. Where was it? I was somewhere. I was on tour. And so they were like, "Yo, come on by and and do the video." I'm like, "Nah, I'm good. I'm on tour." You know, I don't just pop up in no videos. That's why you don't see me in everybody's video right now. Right. You know, uh, and then it was like, nah, we got this special thing we trying to do, but they never told me the song. Right. You know, I think they wanted to surprise me more so than anything that they did this song and they wanted to show respect. You know, nah, we got Wayne, we got Drake, we got all these people here and everything. And I was like, I don't give a fuck. You know, right. I don't, I'm <laughs> just, it's just not my vibe. Right. You know, uh, they're all cool people. You know, but I don't just move like that because right. somebody is someplace. And uh, you know, we'll send a jet and all that. No, I don't need no fucking jets and all that. What are right. doing? And uh, so long story short, after the video was shot, shot, then it was all these articles. I guess they had the press set up. Uh, Uncle Luke and French Montana and Drake and Wayne and all them. And then I'm like... I don't know nothing about this fucking song. So people start hitting me. Mm-hmm. You know, like right now, you know, they hit me right now about the Young Miami song and all that. It was, it was the same vibe around the same time. And uh, I was like, I don't know what the fuck that is. Right. You know, and that was, you know, then it became a little, as if it was a little beef. And I was like, yo, bro, I don't have beef with nobody. Did French Montana look out? Like, did they cut you a check? Did Diddy cut you a check? No, I ain't want no check. I ain't want no check. Why not? It wasn't. It, 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 if it was done the right way, yeah, you we'll negotiate, you know, right. through people. But I, I don't want checks like that. Right. Yeah, I just let people have. Shit. All money yeah, ain't good real. money. I was about to say. And you know. Yeah, I let people. You people do certain things certain way. Right. And and now speaking of the uh, young Miami, recently Joe Button made a statement about the future of female rappers. He said that the girl rapper wave is over and that it's over for most female rappers. They ain't selling records no more. What do you think about that? You think that's true? Like the girl wave of rappers? I don't think it's. I don't. That's not true. Girl rappers are. Girl rappers have cemented themselves and their legacy in this business. They got a major fan base. You know whether it's Ice Spice or 
or Sexy Red or whoever it may be, they they got fans. Yeah, they shout out to Sexy Red. Yeah. We had her on the show. She busted a dope little freestyle. Yeah. So, so you think the females are here to stay? Because, you know, females yeah. been killing it even more than the males these days. Like they in killing the game. it. They killing it. Shots you got a bunch fired. of dudes. Shots uh, fired. You know, a lot of a lot of dudes. Uh, it's, it's too many dudes when you think about it. It is too Oversaturated. Many. Yeah, but and they're then, all talking about the same stuff. Yeah, exactly, killing and robbing and exactly. But yeah. the, you we know, uh, recent uh, what was yeah. it? Last year, Hitmaker he had made a statement saying that a lot of the female rappers rap about the same thing about like freaky stuff, sex stuff. And That's good. Do you do you think that freaky or sexual music will ever go out of style? With you Shit. being the king of freaky, I, I mean, no, it ain't never going out of style. I right. mean, I go do concerts right now. And it sells out based on the same people who said my shit wasn't gonna last. Right. I mean, when I was doing the music, oh, that shit ain't gonna last. It's sexual music. We want to hear some conscious shit. Con <laughs> it's all John. One thing about music is all areas of music. Right. You know, and that's why I respect. I always learn if you can sell one person a record, you are, you are now in the business. Right. If you can't sell a record, then you're not in the business. So at the end of the day, I respect all the women. You know, for what they're doing, their fan base. I respect the fact that they're going out, they're putting on shows, they're entertaining people. You know, and I ain't never, I ain't never one gonna hate on nobody. Who you think the top three female rappers will be? Who oh, your, who, who the dopest you think? Oh man, uh, I, I won't do that. I'm not you say that. Nicki, Cardi. I ain't doing that. I'm not getting into that. I'm not oh, getting into that. It's a hard, right? right? It's so oh, many of them. Fuck you did that. Everybody gonna be calling him after the podcast, like what? <laughs> but but you know, but but you know, recently, um, Nicki Minaj actually lost a Grammy to uh, Killer Mike. So did uh, Travis Scott. You know, for oh, bad. I'm best not gonna lie, album. I love that. What? I love that for him. Well, Killer Mike. See yeah. How they arrested him after? I saw yeah. that. I don't yeah. want to see no yeah. black man win. I hated that. I hated that. Right. I was like, so, let him. So what? What are your views about that? How do you feel about Killer Mike beating Travis Scott and Nicki Minaj and other contestants for best hip hop album in the Grammys? I'm, I'm happy for Killer Mike. I mean, Killer Mike do so much for the culture. He do so much for his people. I mean, he put so many people to work in Atlanta. You know, uh, and as far as the music, the people, the people determine. You know, they vote. You know. Uh, one thing about the Grammys is not about it's not about uh, an individual. You know, if if people want diff something different, they need to vote. You know, uh, and a lot of people don't vote. You know, we just sit back and talk shit. Same way with our politics. You know, people just talk shit and they don't vote. Right. And so when all them white people be sitting up in there, that's a part they of, be voting. of of of, yeah, uh, of be our voting, academy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they vote, and so motherfuckers get mad. You know, take right. your ass in there and vote. So, so you don't you don't agree with like people that said that like Killer Mike robbed Nicki Minaj and Travis Scott of that Grammy? No, no, no. I mean, it. it I mean, and also you had Killer Mike was on the documentary on the yeah, Freaknik. He's yeah, on there. Yeah, Killer That's Mike right, yeah. is my guy. I mean, music is music. You know, to each his own. You know, everybody at this table might like something different. Right. You know, and I respect what she like, her, her, you, and everybody else in this room. I mean. It's music. That's the beauty of music. Everybody you got their find, own taste. Yeah, yeah you can, we can sit up here and argue about who we think top five or who we think, think top three or who right. the greatest of all time, who on the Mount Rushmore. You know, that's based on your choice of right. music. So what do you think about Jay-Z's comments about Beyonce never winning album of the year at the Grammys? He made a statement at the same uh, show, and he was saying how, you know, she won. Actually, I think Beyonce won more Grammys than anyone. Mm -hmm. But she's never won album of the year, oh, which yeah. is the highest mm -hmm. Grammy you can win. And Jay Z called that out, and he said that you know she she deserves the best. How, how do you feel about? No, that? I, I think she do deserve it. I mean, you know, Beyonce have, has done so much for the business, the culture. She even at, I mean, even her being the in my opinion the top female artist, uh, she does. She she deserved that. I mean, mm -hmm. she always. She's always, you know, uh, she ain't never sold out. You feel me? She ain't never like, okay, I'm Beyonce. Fuck all the rest of y'all. Mm -hmm. You know, that woman always look look out. And, and when you look at some of the things that she's done, even on record, some controversial statements, you know, that she's made on behalf of black people, mm -hmm. you know. And so when I look at things like that, you know, I'm, I highly respect that, you know. And, 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 and again, Jay is going to, 
he gonna defend his wife, which is right. you know that's what a man's supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, you you see your wife leave without the shit, you know, and you know she deserve it. You know, you see somebody else leave with the shit, you know, uh, you know you got to stand up for her. Right. You know, facts. Ex- that's true. You know, and, I, and, I, and I respect that. Now, you a while back, you called out Jay Z a few years back for choosing J Lo and Shakira for the Super Bowl halftime show, saying that it should have gone to Pitbull, Flo Rida, and Rick Ross. What do you think about Usher's halftime performance this year? Uh, I mean, when I when I I, I called out Jay for that, uh, and me and him had a conversation. You know, we sat down and had. So did Jay call you like, "Yo, Lou"? Why yeah, you that's say my that, dude. Man? I, I fuck with him. You know, that's that's my. How dude. does a conversation with Jay Z work? Like that's because you know they always say, "Do you want the half a million or the dinner with Jay Z?" Like, how does the conversation? Which one y'all want? The half a million. Well, which y'all choose? A million dollars or dinner with Jay Z? I would do dinner because you get to interact with someone. And you get to know who they are as a person. What about uh, you? What about go ahead, you? Go ahead. No, go ahead. Honestly, dinner or a million dollars. For real, look, I'm from the Bronx. He's from Brooklyn, right? Right. I'm choosing the million dollars. Come on, you come on. You know. <laughs> okay, so then eventually I can have dinner with him. Eventually, y'all. Right, 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 right. What about you? Yeah. What you choosing? I'm definitely choosing the million dollars. Shout out to Jay Z, though. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Hold on. What, would, what would you choose? Since you didn't already be talking to him, me? <laughs> I mean, we talk all the time. So. Yeah. I mean, we well, gonna take the time, that million, then. <laughs> we talk. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would take the million? No, 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 no. We were having that conversation. And, but what is a conversation with Jay Z like though? Like, I right? mean, it, I mean, He's just like it's like, like anybody else. Anybody right? else? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, I, I mean, I, I met Jay uh, when he was just hanging out with Biggie. Mm-hmm. You know, when he, when he was one wow, of the guys in the back. That's dope. That's crazy. Yeah, this right? is a fucking that's, OG, that's right? Y'all don't that's even dope. know. Yo, be Y'all don't studio. even know who we talking to For right real? now. We don't, yeah. but it's okay. We so I, I, I know when he first started, and and Big was like, yo. That dude is gonna be the shit, you know what I'm saying? And so, I so mean, wait, Biggie told you that Jay Z is gonna be big. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was doing this oh, show shit. called a Peep Show, uh, similar to this, uh, way back then, way back then. And, Did you uh, think he was gonna be as big as he is now? If Biggie, if Biggie said it, I mean, one thing about artists, certain artists, some of us, uh, we know who got that it. Mm. You know, you know a motherfucker who got that yet. Yeah. Like, like when I discovered- You got that eye, you can tell yeah, talent. God give us that gift. Like right. when I discovered uh, Pitbull, I know he had that it. Right. When I found Trick Daddy, I know he had that it. Right. Ace Town, I know they had that it. Two Live Crew. I, I, God gives us that ability to be able to know uh, good artists, great artists uh, from uh, not so great. Right. You know, he knew he had that it. So he was like, oh, can you, interviewing him, you know, I had a big time show like you have a big time show and uh it was on action page. So you yeah. interviewed Jay Z? Yeah, you never saw the interview? I gotta look that up. Oh, I gotta I'm look go that look up. up. I'm that's about to so after this show yeah. I'm gonna watch that. I'm tapping in for sure. <laughs> you gotta that's see crazy. That I know oh, that's wild. Fuck, now oh now but now you mentioned uh when you discovered Pitbull and when you discovered Trick Daddy. Now you know recently Fat Joe took credit for discovering Pitbull and Trick Daddy. So Yeah and he walked that back. How yeah. you feel about that? When he said it, was I, that Cap? Like, did he did he really discover them, or no, did you I like? Fuck no, no, hell no, <laughs> no, 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 no. at all, absolutely no. Because he I responded mean, to you, and he was like, "I said what I said." Truth no, no, we got on uh, uh, one of those lives on Instagram. Mm-hmm. He was like, "Nah, nah, nah. I don't mean I don't mean it like that. I mean I did some work with them after. No, fuck no." He had to renege. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You know, and that and that's the thing. That is the thing. You know, some people will say things, but then, you know, in a in a setting, they will say things and they then, you know, motherfuckers are still head. living and you know, uh, you know, a nigga like me, I ain't got no problem with speaking my word. My, right. You know what I'm saying? I get right on that shit and go to hey, hold the fuck on. No, right, no, no, right. no. So to set the record straight. <laughs> Uncle Luke discovered Pitbull yeah. I believe and it's Trick Daddy. No question about it. I mean, <laughs> Pit was in Opalaka uh, yeah. with cornrows and braids and shit in his head. Ain't nobody was fucking with him. Yeah, Wait, Pitbull? 
Pitbull. So this pit bull before he was bald, like he yeah. had braids. Damn. I'm trying to vision that. I'm trying to That's the original right? pit bull oh, right there. Me, y'all want me, me to send the pictures? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got all photo Please. shoots and shit. Please. See, that's when you discover somebody. You got photo shoots oh. and you got recordings yeah. when you Back went in, in the, the studio. Yeah. Nah, versus, he pulling out I the Mercedes versus curse. saying that. You know, Are there any other artists like off the record that you like played a part in the success of their career that maybe people don't know about? Uh, it's you know quite a few people. I mean, Cool and Dre used to be uh, interns. Oh at, wow, at really? Cool and Dre, that's cool and Dre studio. Them, yeah. That. yeah, and so I mean, uh, a lot of, I mean, Khaled. Khaled was on the underground radio station. I got him he off the Nola, underground yeah, station and brought him to Ninety Nine Jams. Hold on, hold on. So you put DJ Khaled on? Yeah, look at his book. Oh, yes, shit. Can we get a bomb a on that? Just chilling in the clubs back yeah. in the day. No, Khaled is my guy. I, I, I love Khaled. So hold on. That's so dope. we That's he so taking dope. it right here. Uncle Luke I'm put on DJ y'all. Khaled. Y'all hear it right here. Oh, he'll tell you. He'll tell you that. <laughs> I mean, That's Khaled. Dope. But again, Khaled, when you looked at Khaled, I mean, back then, you, you knew he had that it. You know he's going to be great at doing something. You know, it's funny you say that, man, because I saw a video recently that went kind of viral of DJ Khaled from back in the day. He was at a gas station and he was giving some people in a car like a flyer. And he was like, yeah, come check this out. We the best. He was screaming the same thing. Yeah, we the great. And they were just looking at it like, OK, whatever, you know. And then it's like, boom, look at him now. Look blew him up. Now, you never bottom. know, man. Yeah, like, girl. that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. why you got to have that you confidence. Him you got to you know. Him that yeah. you, you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you either have it or you don't. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Like we... Khaled, like I say, I love Khaled to death. I love what he's doing. You know, his family, everything. You know, and and when you when you saw him, like you say, it wasn't like he was in the business. He was more, he was doing his DJ thing. He was great at that. And right. you know, I put him on the radio, and then became DJ Khaled on the radio. And then he blew up from there. But he made his own. He made himself. He did. He, did. he inserted he did. himself. You and that footwork, it. that groundwork. Yeah, right. and if there's. Let me tell you, if there's any anybody uh, that's you know a guy a guy who got that kind of grind, I mean, I got, got videos uh, of when I did those little documentaries, some little peep shows and freak shows. We got videos of Khaled used to hustle cell phones, wow, brick phones and shit. Wow. You know the burnout phone. <laughs> Yo, I got wow. this phone for sale. <laughs> Man, Luke, man, Luke, man. I know that. We the best. It's the best cell phone. Get it how you can. Get it how you can. fucking ice the Eskimos. I mean, but he got a fucking great heart. When I tell you, you know, and I, and and you probably had to ask him, but but now one person, Joe, I know for a fact, took under his wing for Khaled. Wow. He took him, I, and, I, and I think, I don't know for a fact, but I know uh, Khaled learned a lot about the business from Joe. You know, because when Cause, uh, you look then, online, you always see Fat Joe with DJ Khaled. Still yeah, this day. even back then, when you look at when you know when they would come, he would be always with Joe, and Joe was at his peak at that time back then. You know, so uh, Joe kind of helped him. You think? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you get with you get with a, a team, and you vibe with them, and then you you know it's you you hustle, and yeah, 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 you learn. Do you, you feel? Do you feel like a lot of people out here like owe you checks? Like any of these artists, you feel no, like they owe you? They don't owe me nothing. No, ain't nobody owe me nothing. You know what I mean? That's not nobody it. owes nobody nothing. I feel like I'm, everybody. I feel like everybody in Florida owed Uncle Luca check. I only like he's so humble. He put about on it, Florida. Though. He's so yeah, humble like, about it. He put Florida it. on. Yeah. Nah, they don't. They don't know checks. I mean, the, the thing is, I, I I just love to see people win. You right. feel me? You know, if you win, if she winning, she wins. It's good karma, though. It come back to you, man. You blessing yeah. other exactly, people, put them on. Exactly. Yeah. That's what it's all about, man. Ain't no, you know. Hey, look, I come do your show and, you know, and y'all give me an opportunity to talk about stuff and you get a, the ladies' opportunities. They all say they're artists and, and one day they may blow and then at the end of the day, it's like, it's just respect. Hey, thank you. That's do you still you put people on? Are you still open to, like, putting people on? Well, uh, to, to a large degree, I'm always teaching. You know, I that's why, you know, I, I coach football. I've been doing that. That's my getaway from everything, I could turn the fucking phone off. Uh, as far as you know, as far as just movie, TV stuff that I'm doing, people get put on. Uh, music, music-wise, once I kind of settle down and with these different projects, then I'm gonna go back, start doing more music, and put more artists on because that's that's really my gift. Who besides yourself 
do you think is the king of Miami? Top Who rapper. beside myself is the king? Ooh. See, y'all be asking these questions and try to get me in trouble. <laughs> Everybody gonna be problems. calling him. That's the number one question the fans wanted to know. Hey, that's yeah. not my question. That's what they wanted Man, to know. That's fucked up. You didn't say me. Uh, <laughs> you said Flo. You said Trick. You said Trina. You said this For way. Real. Why you didn't say this? Why you yeah, Shout then, out yeah. to Trina. Well, yeah. We interviewed her. She's real. I love yeah. Trina. Shout out to Flo. Shout out to Flo Riley. Yeah. I mean, who is the who? And personally, for Uncle Luke, who would you consider the king of Miami besides yourself? Uh, let me let me tell you the real talk. All of them do something. All of them do things for the community in their own unique way, and that's what I like about them. You know, uh, because that's how I always been. When you think about Flo, Flo got a new football league. Do so much for kids. When you think, and you know, through him and Freezy. <laughs> His uh, brother-in-law and all that. And then you look at Trick. Trick do love the kids. He always doing something. He always involved with right. kids. Same and speaking of that, kids. you've been involved a lot in the community, positive change and growth in Miami. And you have an organization, um, the Liberty City uh, Optimist. So, yeah. so we got to talk about that. But, but they it's all funny that you shit. mentioned that, like, beyond the music, like, what are they doing for the community? That's because what you're in being a the king, king, it's about impact. You know, it's exactly. funny. It's not just really about music or numbers or how many view count, you know. So so who would be your top five? Is that <laughs> easier? Man, top five this easier. This man good here. Let me put, let me put, <laughs> top five. I know he said Flo Rider. He said Trina. Let me put it this way. Let me put it like this, right? Let me put it like this. Okay. I, I, I judge people... Uh, I, in my own personal way, I draw, judge people based on a tree. Right. You know, you look at a tree, you have the body. You have the body, you have the foundation, and then you, got you the have roots, yeah. the, mm-hmm. the, the Then you have got the, the branches. Leaves, yeah, the branches. So if you got a lot of <laughs> branches with your people that you put on, you feel me, that's on your tree, mm-hmm. then that's mm-hmm. how you should be judged. Right. But if you only put yourself on, you know, and it's all it's about different, you, yeah. you know, then you can't Selfish. even be in a conversation. Mm-hmm. It's kind of even like Jay Z, how he said, "I made more millionaires." Like, and he was naming like a lot of the millionaires that he made because it's funny because, like you said, you always gonna get that's paid. a lot of big artists. And I noticed that a lot of the artists that really transition and that were able to stay hot, they work with other artists and give new artists a shot. Yeah, like if you look at certain artists, you know what I'm saying. So it's funny, like you're saying, who who's really putting people on who's out here? Who's really putting people on? If you if it's all about you and you ain't you ain't got no tree. Right. You know, my tree deep. I mean, I can sit there all day and talk about all the people that's on my tree. And they all, foundation, you know, they yeah. all call up, you know, hey, hey, look, what's up? Uh, you know, and ask questions all the time, you know, and uh, and, uh, and I give them uh, good knowledge and good conversation. Right. So we going to roll with everybody is different. We ain't going to, we going to put you on the spot. Like, oh, you got to tell us the top. There's too many. You got everybody in Florida. going to be blowing up after this. Not, but how you, but how you feel about the new cats those. though? Like the these, new new, cats? these new cats coming out. Like, I, I like them. I like, I like a lot of the music. I don't ask me names. If you play songs, I'll be like, yeah, I can sing that song, but there's so many fucking names. Same. There's a I'm whole the bunch way. of young guys, yeah. and young boys, and, these they, they, they got babies. the same names and shit. Everybody baby it's and true, everybody. True, I'd <laughs> yeah. be like, what the fuck? I can't keep up with this shit. <laughs> but then I I love I love a lot of the, I, that's all I listen to. I li- I'm all over the place, man. I right. sit there and listen to rock and roll. Mm-hmm. You know, I that's all I am. You got a crazy you playlist, though. I, man, yeah. my phone. You see my shit. Yeah. Yeah. Right. What the fuck? Yeah. Country. So, I love that Beyonce's doing that country. No, I love that. Love a lot it. of people were being mm. critic about that. Mm. Like Beyonce's mm. doing country. But that's nothing new. Come I love that. Yeah, yeah. Like, you switch yeah. it up. Yeah. She the girls. Right. Let them know I you could do it too. Rich roots. We could do it too. I love that. And we, I mean, artists always. Fuck around with everything, you know. Mm-hmm. They catch a vibe and they'll be they'll sing country all day. Tell me, like, you know? why do they try to make that a big deal that black people are doing country? That's nothing new. Who invented yeah. the band? I feel like we invented right. it. Black people invented Every country. Every form of yeah. country. If you think about it, I like that too. I still rocking the Tim McGraw Nelly song that over and over again. Yeah. Shout in my head. Nah. I, he, I love that. Okay. Okay. I love. I that like that shit. <laughs> you fuck with Nelly. My my favorite song is All oh, My Exes Live in Texas. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> but you know, a lot of the young cats, man, they not really seasoned to the business like you. Because you, what was unique about you when you came in, 
you had your own label and you know doing research on you it was surprising to me to see that you had the first black independently owned record label in america like that's crazy yeah so so that means you had the label before master p and oh yeah uh you know Birdman and oh, yeah. all these guys you know like you were the don't, original don't play yeah. with uncle Thank god Exactly. So do you feel like you, know. do you feel like you opened the door for like Birdman and Master P? Well, the thing the thing is, shit, I tried to sign Master P. He had a song called Ice Cream Man. Oh, I remember that mm-hmm. one. Yeah. I tried to sign. So he him. was unsigned. He was he, he was doing his own thing. He was like, "No, nah, fuck that shit. I want to be like you. I'm doing my own <laughs> shit." I'm like, "Let's go." You that's know, crazy. The, the thing is, when I was doing it, it was again. That's why you know. Most people credit me for starting hip hop in the South. It's no, it was nobody doing hip hop in the South. You couldn't get signed. A uh, and R, our record label was not going to sign a rap artist, rap group from uh mm-hmm. from the South. So you had to basically do it yourself. Wow. And so creating uh, hip hop in the South, you know, we we inspired a lot of people because then I had to be the entrepreneur. I had to own the record company. I had to manufacture the product. I had to market the shit. How did you get money to like start a label? Were you in the streets? Like, did you have like street money? Or? You, you, well, because I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, Master P, he had a little, he was like, yo, I had a little, you know what I mean? Birdman had, how did you have money to like? You probably had to see the other uh, Striptus series. Go we got to watch the other series. Okay, that's <laughs> a different, the the that's a different documentary. Answer. Okay, but, but I mean, I, wait, was you a P? Was you, was you, was you a P? I DJ. Okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I DJ. <laughs> no, not a film. No, no. You no. didn't film. Okay. No. okay. I mean, he, he had the girls. Come on, on the loop. Like, all right. Come on. Not condone pimping, guys. Even if he didn't, even if he wasn't a P, he was still a P. No, he, was like he that. had yeah. it one time. I, I, let me tell you. I always pride myself on paying all the girls. You okay. Know, I put all the girls. I put girls on girls. And that's a, uh, another thing with people. He put on the girls too, so not just celebrities. Yeah, he put they, girls on. You you put put girls on. Like, yeah. when, you, when they go back to the strip club and they're loop dancing, that's like being a Playboy dance. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? So they get all the money because they're on a the video and things like that and they profession. But but at the end of the day, no, nah, I, I can't I can't do that. I can't vibe with that. I'm all about everybody trying to it's make a, a bag, but I, I I can't be managing no girl. I, I can manage an artist. Yeah. Not girl. But I mean, even like That's managing, what do. Right. right? But managing a label, like people don't understand the amount of work that comes into it. Like they, you know how they say, never sign to an artist because the artist will never want you to be bigger than them and all of that and sign an artist. Mm. But you being an artist, produce no. like everything, like that. That's not easy to run a label, especially no, being the first one to do it. It's, it's not. I mean, and when I when I started the label, you know, yeah, you know, a hey, little bit of money here, but then I, I. Mainly got most of my money from DJing because I was the top DJ in Miami. My parties wow. would do anywhere from, you know, five, six thousand people on a weekend at different venues. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, so shit. I, I mean, I, oh, I, I did that. So I took that man. money. I took that money and invested into doing concerts and shit. I was the first person to bring hip hop to uh, Miami, bringing artists down from New York. And, you know, from that, then I then got into the fucking uh, music business. And then from the music business, uh, again, not having a big budget like the major levels, labels back then, it wasn't no streaming. It wasn't none of that. It was this was before cassettes. all of that, yeah. It was cassettes. It was, cassettes. It was, and, and it was before CDs. I think that was a was beautiful records. time for artists, man. There was so yeah, much money to make. Money. Like it's, now yeah. it's like you can't really judge like when we interviewed Bus Rhymes, he was saying like, how can you really judge the streaming pay rate? It's like you can't even really, it's not like a real amount. It's just no. weird. Like people, people paying for streams and shit mm-hmm. nowadays. Yeah. It's not organic. You know, right. and it's not, yeah. Back then you, you had a record, you know, and I had to manufacture this shit, you know, so I know all aspects of the business. That's why I be laughing when a lot of people, you know, credit themselves as real record companies. They're really not. They're subsidiaries of, of a major record company. Right. You know, when you gotta go press that shit and you gotta put it in the back of your trunk, then you gotta go take it to the distributor, uh take it to the local distributor and then put it you on a label. Put it on a boat, <laughs> a bus, uh and, and put it in a yellow freight, one of them freight trucks and right. shit. You know, that's when you fucking a uh, record company. Right. And, and the margin of money back then was a lot more. You you make a I would make a record for thirteen cent and sell it for two dollars and twenty cents. 
Right. So look at the numbers on that. That's and that's and, and they keep in mind this back in the day. So like yeah, exactly. the money is different. Like a million dollars back then is not what it is now. No. Like so that's yeah. two dollars is like to now what would that be more like five dollars these days? You know, oh, yeah, more yeah, like yeah, it was, it inflation was, is crazy. Yeah. And you know, I know it was rumored that you actually sold the two live crews catalog for a rumor five hundred thousand. Is that true back in the no, day? No, 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 hell no, five hundred thousand. It'll be more than that. I actually what I, what happened with me is I had back then I was sampling everybody who was doing all these samples without clearing the samples. Major samples, sample this, sample Full Metal Jacket, me so horny off of the off the movie and all that shit. And so I had a shitload of lawsuits. And uh, and then how many lawsuits, lawsuits did you get? Man, at one point I had like probably thirty lawsuits. Thirty, damn, thirty right. lawsuits. Yeah. Don't play with Uncle Lou. That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> and so at the and at the same time I'm I'm fighting for free speech. I'm going to the Supreme Court. Right, and, and for the people too that don't I know, he's that, the reason. Yeah. That yeah. they created the parental advisory. He fought for artists and no, free I love that. you created, yeah, you I created the parental. Had, you know how the CDs have the parental. He's the original. That. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. You pay me for that shit. That's dope. The that's uh, worst dope. thing I didn't do in business was copyright that. Right. But uh, but but again, I got all these lawsuits. So I actually went chapter eleven, uh, bankruptcy, which is a reorganizational plan. Mm-hmm. You know where you can get rid of all the fucking lawsuits and still be making money, right? Versus seven and all that, and then I got rid of a bunch of friends because they didn't know the difference between a chapter seven and a chapter eleven, right? And by, and, and by <laughs> the way, guys, just so you understand, filing bankruptcy is was actually created for rich people. So I don't know if people don't understand that <laughs> no, it's it's all. for this rich people smart. to get out of paying this shit their bills. Yeah. Like a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. A lot of Donald Trump filed bankruptcy, yeah, so like billionaires filed bankruptcy. It's not invented for poor people. Yeah. It's for people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but you know, that's another topic. Yeah, if you but, do seven or yeah. some shit like that, right, now right. you broke. It, yeah, yeah. You know? it's different. It's different it's levels different to levels, bankruptcy. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I got rid so of So you filed all, to get out of all of that I lawsuits. I to get rid of all the right. lawsuits. And then I had a bad deal with a record label. Uh, that my first deal with a record label. And I wanted to get out of that. So you got to reject that in the bankruptcy and then start over. So that shit is put all the money, put everything in this one bag. And then the money that you're making, you start getting that money. You ain't got to really pay. Uh, all those suits and let them cram down and take that. So I lost um, in the bankruptcy. Those guys wanted to go with a, another record late, another record guy. And then I'll say majority wins. And so just take all the shit. So I, you were forced they, to sell your publishing at that no, time? I, no, I, no, no. They just, they went with the other label and I gave them everything. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm on that. You know what I'm saying? I, so I, you didn't sell your publishing? No. No, oh, so shit. they purchased it in bankruptcy. Mm. They purchased everything in bankruptcy, and and they went with the with, with this guy. Uh, and at the end of the day, they went with him. They didn't sell no music. Uh, Ace Time was with me. They went with uh, this one company. They didn't sell no music. So at the end of the day, all them dudes who who just turned it back on me, you know, when I was in that situation when we all were doing it, you know, hey, look, I'm sitting up there laughing like I'm, I'm gonna find oh, out who shit. my true oh, friends shit. are, I'm gonna find out what artists really fucking with me and dudes jumped off the boat and and that's- A lot of and, people disappeared. Yeah, and that's- You know, it's funny how people, your friends like, and then like, yeah. something yeah. go down and- That's yeah. when you find out. And so, because people don't realize what it is, but then the people who stayed was Trick Daddy and fucking Pitbull. They was right there. Fuck that shit. How your relationship with Trina? Around the Trina, there. that's my girl. I love her. I mean, Trina is, we raised Trina. Man. Trina, uh, my stepdad, Mr. Wonderful. That was a, yeah, on the, in the neighborhood. That was a spot that mm-hmm. I used to be at on a regular basis. Her stepbrother was, you know, like still, still is one of my personal friends. You know, and uh, we know her since she was a little girl running around. Right. Mm-hmm. And I, I, that's like my little sister. You know, but but back to what you were saying about the court stuff, man, like it can get crazy, you know, and, you know, recently it's been just like a lot going on, like the movement about, you know, prosecutors using artists lyrics against them in court cases, you know, for example, like Young Thug. What what, what are your views on that? Man, my, uh, on the it, indictment, you know, that can be based upon lyrics. Yeah, I, I have a problem with that because, you know, when you open up a can of worms, what ends up happening is in that can of worms, then they use it for every other case. And that's why. 
That's why when my work, my album was deemed obscene by a federal judge, it wasn't that I was going to jail. I went and said, and I could have left it. And they, obscene. for the people that don't know, they were trying to ban all of your music yeah, because they, they said that it was too vulgar back then. Yeah. They did that to you? Damn. Yeah. He oh, like, yeah. his and case jail. was like internationally known. It was the biggest story. Like they tried to ban him for his free speech for his music sometimes. and he fought and, he, and you won. Yeah, no, they actually didn't ban me. They Damn. did get a ruling to say this album is deemed obscene and they started taking it That's what happens when you're a powerful black man yeah. with a platform. <laughs> That's, crazy. That's what happens. Yeah, exactly. And so when they did man. that, yeah. I had to go back in and overturn it. I, I could have uh, left it on the books. And if I left it on the books, all the girls that you see rapping now, all the guys mm -hmm. before that, they would have been able, they would have had case law to exactly. be able to, so he made to be able to do it. So you basically paved the way to be able to have your sexy red singing. Yeah. Yeah. So without him, we wouldn't have none of this music if you think about it. Yeah. Shut that shit down. Do you think they going too hard on Thug? You think they should free Young Thug? Uh, I, I don't know too much about the case. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't, but I know you shouldn't be prosecuting with lyrics. Right. Because if you do that, once you open that can of worms and they allow that to happen with one person, everybody. they're going to do it to they're everybody. Do it everybody yeah. And that's that's going to be their way of stopping that's hip hop. That's the example. Right. They're making an example. Yeah. Now, now they're going to then determine who yeah. who you should be listening to. Oh, fuck that. We got case law. We can fuck with you. We don't oh, like yeah. what you're saying. And that's right. the way they'll go about censoring. Like I know you've been very involved in the community. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your organization? Oh, man. Uh, my... First check was to buy my mom a house. My second check was to start my youth program because I, you know, I was a kid that played football and I was bust to Miami Beach to play. And I think they was using me and my other friends. And we get home late at night, eleven o'clock at night. So I didn't want that to happen to no other kid from my community. If I ever got two cents over my lunch money, so we started the program, Liberty City Optimist, and. You know, we got tons of successful people that came out of it. We got probably more NFL players of any uh Did you get LeBron involved in that? Huh? Did you get LeBron James involved? Yeah, uh, I'm a of that. Man. With the uh with the as far as the doc as far as the docu uh series that we did, we partnered up and did a docu series based on the uh on the uh Optimus program. Do you, you know, have any was, regrets? Oh no, no regrets at all. You don't regret nothing? No, not at all. I mean, everything I did, I I, uh, I thought about it. I thought I was doing the right thing, whether I made a mistake or not. I take my, my negatives and uh, I turn them into positive. And I know neg you need negative and positive to uh, create energy. So, you know, I don't let no negative. I don't let nothing get me get me down. I love, I love hate. I love negative, negativity. You need all of it. There's no love without hate. There's no hate without love. Like if you it's ain't hating, balanced. you ain't popping. Right. Exactly. You I mean, got it. yeah. I mean, in order to cut that light on, you're gonna need two eyes. You're gonna need. You're gonna need a negative. Everything a is negative. That's funny. He said that everything is negative and positive in life. When you plug something into an outlet, like he said, mm -hmm. there's one side negative, one positive. There's no positive without negative, no negative and without positive. You need it all. It's balanced. That's energy. What advice would you give to any? young brothers and sisters that want to get in the music industry or want to even get into the TV industry? Trust yourself. I mean, every every one of those artists that we talked about that I work with, you know, uh, they had their own hustle. They had their own grind. You know, they believed in themselves first. They, I mean, they never... All the people you discovered, you knew they had it. You they, saw it. They knew they had it. And they yeah. had the confidence. Mm -hmm. Because when you got that it, you got to have confidence in yourself. You feel me? And a lot of people... You know, a lot of people uh, don't have confidence in their ability in themselves, and then they sit there and they wait for somebody uh, to, to give them a handout. No, right. it's a mm -hmm. slow grind. Right. If you get one friend that like your song, then that friend gonna tell another friend. You know, it's almost like that commercial. Uh, the old, uh, people, uh, yeah, Deal people want commercial. overnight success. They don't understand. Yeah, like, I'm no. sure you work years. Like, it's Man, not easy be getting to work. grind because yeah. because you know the artist that I had that that just got hot as soon as I put it out and they sit on top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody drops. I mean, you're gonna even in a relationship, you're gonna mm -hmm. have a bad time, you know, but if you if you know how to grind to get up that hill, you know, and you always know how to get back up the hill. Right. You feel me? And so uh though that's the advice I, I tell people, let it be a slow grind. There ain't nothing wrong with it being a slow grind. Just believe in, in what you are. Uh, and what you uh, love, believe in yourself, number one. 
Absolutely. You don't trust yourself. Amen. Round of applause to that. Round of applause to the legend. Now look, now guys, he got the Freak Meek movie, well, documentary that just came out on Hulu. This guy is a freaking freak king. Like this guy <laughs> paid the way. We got a little surprise for you. Um, we got a little surprise for you. Come on up here. Let's do some freak dig. Let's get it going. Come in the camera. Come get in here. Okay. Oh. Hey. 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 I feel fucked up right now. I ain't got no ones. Oh, hey. 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 Hey.